there are a lot of things that you develop and acquire in your lifetime, the tools that you use throughout your life. And I acquired some of those as a child. One of them that I learned early in life, or I developed, was a love of reading. My mother was a pro prolific reader. And I read everything I could get my hands on as a child. And I really enjoyed reading science fiction. And I think that that shaped a, something of what I did later on because I thought it'd be a wonderful thing to do in life. However, we didn't have astronauts at that time. It was before we had a, a real space program. And so I, I established all these things in the back of my mind that would be, wow, really great to do, but we're not doing those things. So I'll go off and do regular normal things right now. But when we did establish a space program, I thought again, about, wow, it'd be really great to do those things. But I developed that, that love of reading, I think, because of my mother. I, I developed a lot of other things, I believe. Some of my, my core philosophies, beliefs, the, the way that I am and have been most of my life from living with my grandparents. They were hardworking. They worked in the cotton mill in Opelika, Alabama. And I think I learned a lot of things about how to, how to interact with people, how to be a good person from watching them and living with them during that time. Like many of his generation, Jim attended college on an ROTC scholarship. This opened doors to a distinguished military career and so much more. ROTC got me through college, but it also provided me with a career path that I enjoyed and I liked a lot. The military suited me. Uh, I think I did well as a military officer, and it, it, it opened up the world to me as well. I got to do a lot of traveling. I learned an awful lot of things about people and working with people uh, through the military. So it benefited me in many different ways, and probably one of the most important things in my life was I met my wife at Auburn uh, while I was going through college. And uh, she's been my partner for over 40 years and uh, has been beside me through ups and downs and through good times and bad times and has been constantly there. And uh, I, I owe all those different things that shaped my life and made me the person that I am, a great deal of it to my college education at Auburn University. His military career led him to West Point, where he developed a passion for teaching. When I was in the military, I had the opportunity to teach in the mechanics department at the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. I didn't think that I would like teaching. I was going to be teaching a subject that for me in college was very difficult and I struggled with, but they taught me how to teach. I found that I enjoyed that interaction in the classroom, the, the question and answers, the getting off topic and discussing things in more depth with the students, and I really enjoyed that experience. And when I left West Point after three years of doing that, I said, one day I think I want to go back and teach again. With the advent of the space shuttle program, NASA was now looking for engineers and scientists to make up the crew for future shuttle missions. Jim saw an opportunity to fulfill a childhood dream and through hard work and patience, became a NASA astronaut. When you go to space, you're very focused on the work to be done most of the time. On shuttle flights that were usually seven to 10 days in length, you're so busy from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep, which is well after when you're supposed to go to sleep, you're very busy, intensely focused on exactly what you have to do. You don't have a lot of time for just sitting around and philosophizing, but once in a while, you stop and you look out the window and you look back at the earth and you see it in a different way. It's, it's very different than photographs. It's like if you're out in the mountain somewhere and you take a photograph that, of a beautiful scene that just grabs you. And then you go back and look at your photograph later and you say, oh, that doesn't do it justice. It's the same way in space, looking back at the earth. And you realize just, how fragile the earth is, how small we are compared to other things on the earth, and even how small the earth is in compared to the entire universe. So it gives you a little bit different perspective on things. While I was on the space station, I was, had been there about five months or so, and we were doing an interview, and it was a variety of different uh, journalists that were interviewing us, and there was someone from Alabama and the person from Alabama asked if, uh, if I would want to fly again. And our whole crew was being interviewed. My American crewmate, Susan Helms, said, 
yes, I'm, I want to fly again. My Russian crewmate, he said, no, I think this is it for me. And, and I said, no, I think I've done everything I want to do in space now. And you know, I think I might want to go and teach. Well, I got an email from the Dean of the College of Engineering very soon after that and said he had heard the interview on uh, some Alabama radio station and that if I was interested in teaching, he'd be happy to have me come back and teach at Auburn. As his NASA career came to a close, life presented Jim with an opportunity to teach again. When I first left NASA uh, and went to Auburn, I, I was an associate dean and I taught classes in the aerospace engineering department. My wife was not ready to retire from NASA and still isn't, uh, so I had to commute from Houston to Auburn. And you could do that by commercial airline, but it would be going into Birmingham or Atlanta and then driving down. And because I wanted to be at home on the weekends, I needed an efficient way to do that. And I had an airplane, so it made sense for me to fly back and forth. It was a four hour flight and really almost as quick and probably it would be quicker than going by commercial airlines by the time I drive to the airport, go through security, fly the couple of hours to Atlanta, drive a couple of hours to Auburn. It was quicker for me to fly my own airplane. One of my personal goals for teaching and teaching spaceflight is to inspire the next generation of people who will go to explore our solar system. And that's one of the sort of tenets of what NASA wants to do. They want to inspire the next generation through education. And I feel that when I walk into the classroom, I think it's part of my charter and challenge is to make those students not only hear the information, but to hear some of the passion that I have for space flight and that it can be a tremendously rewarding career for them and they can enjoy it as much as I did, uh, whether as an engineer, an astronaut, or a financial advisor or an accountant, uh, you can you can get a great satisfaction out of doing this kind of work. And I want them to feel that and understand that and see that so that when they go out to work that they'll hopefully be able to have that same experience that I've had. Is that right? Is that right? Is that right?